<coughs> this is uh, another um, past paper uh, video for the diet, for uh, AQA. Now we're doing. Um, well, we were as my pen decided to, you know, had enough already. No, it was started. Um, we're doing January twenty eleven today. Uh, this paper kind of caught my eye for a, a number of reasons, but um, hopefully uh, you'll kind of see that. And I'll, I'll summarise at the end uh, what to watch out for in, in this particular paper. So we'll get started. Um, now, if you have the paper, if you look alive, you can uh, see the paper as we're going through it, of course. And, you know, if you have a fancy Windows 7 or Windows 8 or even Windows 10, because you skip 9, uh, then, you know, we can, uh, hopefully it might be a bit more clearer to you. That's what I'd advise anyway. So, uh, for question one, this is question one, of course, it has uh, something like this. I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of it. Um, obviously, this is nothing really too physicsy at the moment, because uh, I'm drawing as a, just a, 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 it's just something you pull apart, like two sort of, um, string things. And these are two handles here, so you've got a handle and another one, and this is some kind of string in the middle that you pull apart. And obviously, uh, being physics, uh, the string is what we're interested in. Now, for part 1a, um, it's got some kind of graph as well. I'll just draw a quick sketch um, of it. Uh, it looks something like this. Obviously, you could just, you know, read the look on that. And this is um, N, and this is delta L. Is it over L or just delta L? Yeah. And so, yeah, that's the force, and that's the compression. And again, you could look uh, to see certain values on this, which uh, will be required in a later question, so, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you a quick um, overview. Now, for part 1a, I, I'm not going to write this down, um, it says state Hooke's law. Now, you may be going, all right, well, what is Hooke's law? Well, it's obviously to do with the strings, otherwise they wouldn't have just randomly said uh, Hooke's law. So, obviously, if we've got force and delta L, it's going to be related to them two. This is just, if you have absolutely no idea what force, what Hooke's law is, I'm trying to explain it to you. Um, like, if you go and see a you oh, I can't remember what Hooke's law was. Well, you look at what they give you. They've given you just about strings. Uh, it's about force, and it's about uh, L, uh, delta L. Now, if you can remember, with the equation, I think it's on your formula sheet, actually. Um, and I think the, f the formula is F equals uh, K times delta L. Now, F is the same as saying M, because um, the force is, Newton is a force. Um, well, it wasn't a force, but it meant EMI. And you've got delta L, so all we have is K. All we don't have is K. And uh, obviously, that's going to relate to this, what I'm going to be saying. So, um, if you can sort of combine this equation and put it into words, uh, if you can't exactly remember off the top of your head, because I'm fairly sure uh, that is given in the exam, that uh, formula at the top, which I've circled. So it's force equals uh, K, the spring constant, times delta L. Now, you can put that, but um, I don't think if you just put that, you can... Um... Yeah, actually, you can... You do, you, so yeah, I would put that as well, but that's not how you'd start it. So you'd say uh, the force applied to a spring is uh, proportional to the um, extension from its unstretched length, is the uh, science definition. And now I didn't just remember that, well, I did remember that, but I, I looked at this and I turned around and I thought, how can I word it? Uh, that it'll relate to this because obviously if you word it uh, completely sort of not unrelated to that um, then either you this is wrong your formula or you've explained it wrong uh, so immediately you should know you've done it wrong but 
that is a Hooke's Law equation. If you remember the equation for Hooke's Law, um, you'll be okay explaining it. Because we said proportional too, so it's got to have a constant of proportionality. Um, I, I will, would go on to explain how uh, we came to that formula, but as it's not required in the um, answer for this question, I'm just going to put f equals k times delta l, and obviously you know how to explain that. But I think that's given in your formula page anyway. So on a part 2, it says, uh, state two features of this graph uh, which represent, uh, which confirm that Hooke's law is obeyed um, over the range of values tested. So what that basically means in English terms is, state how this graph um, shows that equation if that is even more remotely helpful. Um, so basically what you have to say is k is a constant of proportionality. So that what means it shouldn't start changing. If it's constant and the force applied is constantly increasing as it's going, as you would imagine it's in, in the um, equally spaced uh, sort of you know, range of value. Basically it should be uh, constantly going up, constantly going up that means if that's going up, the constant of proportionality must be the same. Otherwise, if it wasn't, and these were going up correctly as, uh, as they should, this would start curving, sort of, um, and obviously we'd have a changing gradient. But as this graph is straight line, we can say that it follows Hooke's law because the gradient is constant, and obviously the constant of proportionality, which is the gradient, is constant. So we can say it follows Hooke's law because it's a straight line. Uh, another, so I just put a uh, straight line. Obviously, these are just a note form, so you need to explain these. So a straight line. Now, this question is uh, two marks. So the other mark you'd get for is stating how it goes through the origin. Now, you may be asking, why does it go through the origin? Well, the reason it doesn't go like uh, up here. And you can start at, you know, when there's no compression and there's a force of eight newtons. If a constant proportionality says, oh well, um, it's proportional to the extension. If there's no extension, then there's going to be no force. Because um, a K, which could be 25 newtons per metre, for example, if you times that by zero, you're going to get a force of zero. So it wouldn't make any sense at all if you had a force of 8 newtons according to Hooke's law and had a zero extension because that wouldn't make sense. So hopefully that's explained it. Um, so it goes through the origin is all you need to say. And that's according to the mark scheme. I don't see any other um, points that would have given you apart from these two. So it goes through the origin. So normally they give you a range of points that you could put and in the mark scheme, we said uh, accept alternate examples, but in this case, um, because it's quite limited in terms of what you can say about the graph anyway, I mean, even if you didn't know what Hooke's law was, you could have still answered that question by just looking at the graph and saying, Oh, what's the same throughout? Well, the gradient's the same, and uh, you could just say uh, where it goes through the y axis and x axis to the origin. So, I mean, you don't really need to have done the physics course, really, to understand why that graph would show that. Well, you know, you would have done, but never mind. Often. The next question, um, one uh, A part three, it says, uh, use the graph. So I'm just going to sort of uh, use a different colour, actually. Uh, basically, it says, it's a spring constant. Now, I said before... Um, Yeah, the gradient is uh, the spring constant. So um, I'm just going to use an example they've given in the mark scheme. So it says 500 newtons. So it's 500 newtons high, and it's a compression is uh, 0.385 meters. Now these values, as I said, I'm just going off the mark scheme here because uh, you know I'm just making sure I get it right and I mess it up. So, obviously, you could do anything else. But what, it, what they're asking you to do, they're asking you to realise um, that 
So yeah, what a part three, I should put this down actually. What you need to do is you need to, you need to, um, I think you get marked for this, yeah. You need to show you're working. You can't just say, oh, well it's this. Because they kind of go, oh, well he's just guessed that and got a lucky guess. Uh, and they won't give you the marks for that, I don't think. So what you need to do is you need to go to your graph, draw a line, obviously um, a dotted line with a ruler showing you're trying to work out the gradient. So you'd label these two points. Now, as I said, they could be um, anything, but they have to be in the sink. So when one, when as soon as you hit the line, you have to go down. Uh, you know, simply working out the gradient of a graph in this case is a uh, K is the gradient, the spring constant, which is asking you to work out. So basically, uh, simple maths here, 500, well it's not uh, simple, but you know, sort of simpler than other stuff we do, uh, 0.385, uh, and that should get you uh, 120, 1290 newtons per metre, um, and it says on the mark scheme, yes, plus or minus uh, 20 newtons per metre. So if you read the graph slightly wrong, you could still be 20 out um, either way and that would get you a mark. So basically what they're saying is you could have 1310 newtons per metre or 1270 newtons per metre as an answer. And obviously um, if we were doing an ISA, that's a large variable, uh, so that would be a large uh, calculation sort of error. But obviously we're not talking about errors. All we're talking about is um, 40 because uh, K times L to L. So um, I'll just put that working shown on graph. And obviously you'd uh, working shown on graph. Now obviously you would have just write, well I've done it, working shown on graph. You'd write the answer in 1A part 3 and you do the working in the little box it gives you in the, in the answer column. Next part, one part, one B, part one. Um, it says, it says show. Um, it says the area of a spring. Uh, 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 sorry, energy stored in the spring equals E half times um, F times delta. Oh, was it? Yeah, F times delta L. Like, how has that worked out? Well, um, F, you could put equals half times N times delta L, which is the same thing. Um, obviously, another energy stored in the spring is uh, equals a half times K squared times delta L. But in this case, it's just asking you to work out from the uh, context of uh, half times force times uh, extension from unstretched length. That triangle thing that's the L, it's not Illuminati, don't worry, I'm not uh, that good. Uh, but what it's saying is um, changing length. Now you may see that, this is more just ge generics sort or of physics, you may see that in a wide variety of uh, physics -y sort of situations, but all it means is changing, it's quite simple and it makes you look quite intelligent as well, um, which I like. Now, how would we prove that? That's three marks. So what you do is, um, I'll just read out the points you need to put on the marks. You, obviously you could just do this yourself. Now the first point you need to do, it's, uh, it could be, there could be, um, so this is a loading curve, it could be a loading and unloading curve, uh, and it would be exactly the same uh, way of working out the um, this formula. So the energy stored in the spring, we could pick any point along this uh, line here, I would just, I'm not sure you need to, I don't think you get any marks for uh, putting it on the diagram, but just to help me sort of visualise this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the point where we said this, you know, we worked out the spring constant. I'm going to pick the same point and I'm just going to say uh, the area under the spring, I'm just going to call it R. Sorry, it's not really uh, seeable, but I'm just going to call it R. And I'm saying the work done up to this point is the area under the line. So, um, the energy stored is the um, area under the line. Energy stored. Now, I'm writing this in note form. Of course, you would write it in proper English. Um, energy stored equals area 
the the line. Now, from your like year two mathematics, you should uh, know the area of a triangle. And that seems very simple, but there's some people are that thick. Yeah, indeed. No, oh, that's a bit intense. Never mind. Uh, so just to say how you'd work out that if you half times height times uh, the length or the base, whatever you want to call it. So you just say the area. Oh God, just me what it be here. Then. Uh, yeah, I'll put that. I'll leave that on actually. You can have some fun. Um, so we just do half times um, height times length. Now that is the same as uh, the height is in terms of force. That's the same as half times uh, force times. I said length on the bottom, we do delta L because that's the compression. Um, so that's the work done. And uh, there are your three marks. Uh, just actually, you, when I said here energy stored equals area under the graph, you need to say energy stored is the same as work done, and that gets you your third mark. So for 1B part 1, you get one mark for saying energy stored is the energy. Uh, energy store is work done, and the work done is the area under the graph, and then you just put the formula in and bank it in for that equals half times f times delta l, and uh, sort of rounds it, rounds it off so you cover all bases. Now I'm just gonna die, so uh, get rid of this. So hopefully you've got that now, and uh, all I'm doing is just so I can finish off one, the first question. Now it says here, uh, 1B part 3, uh, part 2, even if I can't count today, never mind, 1B part 2, it says uh, the person causes uh, a compression of 0 0.2, so the first thing you always do when you get a question and it, it sort of getting you to calculate something, you write down what you know, even, even before you know what the question is asking you, because you might start a question um, and it throws a load of information at your face and you go, right, well, what am I going to need that? And you just read it. All you do is wasting time just reading the question, which you'd look for. It's what I tend to do when I'm in an exam, is I'll, I'll look at a question and i go, right, well, it's asking me to do this, what do I need? And I try and look for that information in, in the question. But the best thing to do is instead of going back and trying to find it, write all the stuff you know in the first place. So that means when you're looking for the question, so uh, it was when looking for the uh, how to answer the question, you've got all the information given in the question. Now sometimes it's just uh, sort of going into a bit more depth than uh, this uh, this paper, but I, I'm trying to give you a bit of a heads up sort of thing. When you, when it asks you um, to uh, find the, it's asking us to find uh, the average power. And now we go, all right, well, there's power equals FV, P equals uh, I, IV, P equals I squared R. You go, well, which one am I going to use? So, we could have used any of them. Well, not could have used, there's one of them we could use. Oh, that's actually P equals uh, delta E over delta T, which is same delta W over delta T, which is uh, what we sort of worked out. Anyway, so um, delta L, yeah, delta L, so you always write what you know, and then you can find out what you need to know, if that makes sense. Delta L equals 0.82 metres. Just another thing as well. Sometimes it'll try and trick you into not giving you SI units. Now, you don't need to worry about every conversion uh, to SI units. It's mainly talking about nanometers to metres or uh, millimetres to metres. The general sort of stuff you should be aware of. They're not going to throw anything that you're not aware of. So, it says the time is 0.2 you don't, uh, oh, 1.5 seconds actually. Uh, calculate, use graph A part A to calculate the average power. So it wants us to cal calculate the average power using this graph. So what, um, pa what power equation involves, uh, maybe not delta L because that's quite uh, sort of a, there's no equation for power that uses delta L, so that's going to be sort of some equation within the equation, if that makes any sense to you. If it doesn't, don't worry. What we need to look at is, we're right, we're not about 100% sure about the delta L, what power equation we're going to use. But we've got delta T, or time. 
Um, what equation for power uses time? Well, it's not IV because that's electricity. It's not force time velocity because uh, velocity we've not got like it's not a sort of a, an object moving. It's a spring being extended, so it's not that one. And the only other logical one we can use is delta E over delta T, which is exactly the same as delta W over delta T because a uh, delta E is work done. Uh, sorry, delta E is energy transferred, which is the same as delta W, which is then uh, work done, or change in work done. As I should say, this triangle is also referred to as delta. So, uh, our power equation is either um, P equals delta W over delta T, or delta W over T, or delta E over T. So, just throwing a load of equations at you there. Sort of thing. Now, to work this out, um, we know delta T, so um, power equals uh, delta W. All I'm doing is writing what I currently know, 1.5 seconds. Now, we said energy transferred is a work done, and the work done is that energy stored in the spring. So what we do is we go up from the... I'll, get, I'll, I'll draw the graph again, actually. So that's the same graph as this, um, and we've got compression, and it goes up something like that. We go up from um, 0.28 metres, because that's what we've been told. Metres, um, we look for the force, and then we find the area under there. And that gets us uh, the work done. So if we go up from uh, 0.28 metres there, uh, we should get... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, 360 newtons, and now the average power we divide it by uh, 2. So we can do that afterwards, or we can do it now. So it's this is 360 newton meters. So obviously, it's not the whole section, it's just the section under the graph. And because that's a triangle, there we can just do a uh, standard equation for a triangle, which is half time base times height. So um, we can put delta W. Now, you see, I've not rubbed any of this off even though I've now got the thing for it. Half times 360 times 0 0.28 over time, 1.5, that hasn't changed. Um, and that gets us our power that we're using. Uh, the power, according to this, is um, 34 newtons. It's actually 30... Um, 33.6 recurring, but obviously round it up to get you 34 newtons, uh, and that's how we answer that question. That's the end of part one, uh, question one. I hope it's been a bit of a guide to you, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.